Olive can do now with, with generative, generative AI tied both to our existing data set and, and publicly available data sets is now you can go from, you know, I, I'm a CFO at a large restaurant chain that really needs to think about, um, you know, solving my payroll issues. Right now, before that would mean we need to go get some third party research, do a lot of work internally to find out which, what questions should I be asking, et cetera. You know, the AI has really helped us to, to walk customers through that. So now you can go with that blank slate um, and Olive can actually suggest to you, oh, you should think about, you know, maybe looking at a whole new HCM suite and here's some of the questions you should be asking. Here's some of the options you should be looking at um, as you go through that process. Here's some more questions to dive deeper. It's really um, almost like an assistant, I feel, to, to that existing workflow. Let's gather all of the information, the data. Let's start looking at the insights. Let's create a scoring pattern for it. Let's start making recommendations and let's optimize it. And then we can continue to go through this framework. So rather than just installing or developing or deploying technology for technology's sake, let's do it so it makes sense. For a lot of artificial intelligence, especially AI that is customer facing, that is real time, things like the drive through, um, there's often a lot of human in the loop kind of making up gaps and Valiant is in the process of pulling out all human in the loop. So our technology moving forward is going to be pure AI carrying on conversations with customers in the drive through. And one of the really exciting things that we've kind of seen out of that is it's drastically reduced speed of service time. So we're now seeing order times at the menu board between 35 and 55 seconds with several of our franchisees running 37 seconds for speed of service across hundreds of orders. Um, and from what we've heard from our customers directly, average human order taking can be anywhere between 45 and 55 seconds. So we're now seeing and getting to a point where Valiant's AI can actually start taking orders faster than what humans can normally take orders. We integrate into other systems, allowing us to get demographics, menu store data, uh, other promotional activity that's going on and other community indicators. With all of that input data, uh, we've developed what we call a taste bud model. It's not just about people's taste buds, it's more about their preferences, how they like to be served, what they respond to, um, and that we use to help the staff in the store to connect to people. So really using AI to make a human to human connection. There's cameras. Mo most of these, most restaurants have cameras, right, installed. Most AI can already leverage those cameras. It's just that people don't know how to do it, right? If you do need to add a camera, like most technology trends, the prices are plummeting and the power is going up. So the edge is getting a lot more a lot more powerful, but you got cameras. Second thing is you need to get all AI is are mathematical algorithms predicting stuff. So you need to get that predictor on the camera or on the edge where it can actually do what's the fancy term of inference. So it's running the application, you know, who's who's coming into my store? What What's their demographics? Where are they going? What do they like? What brands are they interested in? What are they doing? That type of stuff needs to run on the camera. So you have to get it on the camera. This is where the software comes in. You have a container of app, an AI app. It's delivered on the camera. The camera then does its stuff. Okay, how do I develop that app? You need a bunch of data. Really, it's just video clips. So a company like mine, you would send us video clips. We would look at the video clips. We would build an alg algorithm. We would train it to identify what you're interested in, and then we would shrink it down, package it so it can actually be delivered on a camera. So that's that's kind of the process. Like A, what do you want, what are you trying to do? B, we just need a little bit of video data from your existing cameras. C, let's build an application, containerize it, actually get it out on the edge running. And then what happens, what happens is you suddenly, like in the case of Mendocino Farms, you don't know exactly how long it takes to make a sandwich as it goes through the various stages. Why are you interested in that? Because you have different stores, different labor efficiencies, you have problems that you're trying to address. Now you've actually got the data that you can act on. Or if you're Burger King, you've got drive-throughs, two windows, am I matching the order to the right vehicle? Am I, you know, those type of things. How long is it taking me to do that? And our idea was right, which was the opening headline was, was, well, especially in restaurants, our target is SMB and mid-market. The one thing that we have seen primarily is that there isn't really the time to look at solutions. There isn't really the time to even hire teams. I mean, a lot of restaurants doing 
one or eight million allocation, right, are not having real marketing teams, are not having real um, training teams. I mean, so so we're trying to sell all of these things, but where can AI to solve this? And our idea is really centering around, can we give them the teams artificially that they're never be able to hire? But nearly every one of our customers that has enabled this sees a pretty significant lift in the average check. Um, we also see the customers are moving through the ordering process more quickly. Um, obviously, you see things you like, you hit the button, you move on. So this is great for throughput, it's great for labor issues, um, which comes back to our fundamentals. Our uh, contribution to the AI environment uh, is sales, labor, and item level forecasts um, powered by machine learning. So we have POS integrations where we're pulling in restaurants' historical data, and then our machine learning algorithms are actually adding in relevant, local, um, future-looking data around weather, events, um, TV schedules, foot traffic, school schedules, things that could positively or negatively affect the order volume to the restaurant. Um, and then we're able to, put, to produce those forecasts four weeks in advance. And um, one of the nice things about them, I think, uh, is that they're updated daily. So if any of the pieces of information change, the restaurant doesn't have to think twice, doesn't have to spend time wondering, you know, now that there's a storm coming out of nowhere, what's that going to do to my sales forecast and what I'm expected to do for the day? Um, we actually update those on a daily basis and let them see in real time how they're pacing to those predictions so they can make, um, you know, labor decisions surrounding those. Uh, we have a little bit of news. Um, the very first life-size talking character went into 24-7 use at a retail center last week. Uh, his name is Chief, and he's at, um, uh, at Liberty Station in San Diego now. So this is an important new area for us, and doing good talking characters is super important for, for our res restaurant and hospitality friends uh, who are having huge staffing issues. Our smart screen very much concentrates on I mean, predictions for upselling, cross-selling, all the things that literally everyone's talked about on this uh, on this call. Um, but we don't make the solution. We just make everyone else's solution better. Uh, we just stay behind the scenes uh, and do that. And so um, whether it be um, my friend Rob at, at Valiant to be able to hook up to, to their system or whether it be through a kiosk uh, at like Byte, um, you can actually, as long as we can uh, get in and, and uh, employ some sort of widget or code or something like that, those predictions that we concentrate on, which is um, predicting upsells and doing all those cool things that about five people have talked about before us. And I think that that's really important in the industry. So first of all, we empower operators to transition with confidence from single use to reusables. In shifting from that 85 cent compostable or single use container to a reusable, you need to make sure that stays in circulation. Essentially, our virtual assistants are created by in-house technology. Um, we built our AI from the ground up beginning in 2018, quote unquote, before AI was cool. Um, we have since integrated LLMs um, into our, our virtual assistants so that the conversations are even more natural and free flowing than they previously were. But for those unfamiliar, you speak to a virtual assistant just like you talk to a person. It's leagues ahead of those frustrating automated systems that we all hate. I know I'm talking to an AI community, so I don't need to sell you on that. Um, but what we are seeing right now is uh, tremendous results um, for our customers. So we work with leading chains like Domino's, Wingstop, etc. We work in the phone and in the drive-through channels. So what does Frederick do? Frederick matches the restaurant brands with qualified driver partners based on predetermined criteria. So what we do when we're onboarding drivers onto our platform is we ask them questions. What kind of delivery equipment do they have? What kind of vehicle uh, do they drive? What area do they want to deliver in? How much money do they want to make? And we build almost this restaurant or this driver profile. Then as orders come in from the different, uh, different restaurant brands, uh, that it will take that criteria that the driver's profile is built on and offer the jobs to those drivers. So we're not just putting it out into a crowdsourced delivery fleet. Frederick is analyzing where the order is at, how big the order is, uh, what that driver's availability is, what that driver's preferred delivery location is, and matching that driver based upon that. So it's not, uh, you know, necessarily like a large third-party model where they just clip the order out, hope somebody takes it, and someone random shows up to get it. 
So what we're seeing here is a couple of cameras uh, above a make line. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking right now at the right camera. The green box denotes um, what the, the computer is, is seeing. Right? So we see a, a ball and we see each ingredient which is added to the ball uh, and we label it as such. Uh, on the upper left corner, what you see is a tile from the kitchen display system uh, that shows us what the actual order that's being prepared as entered by the guest or as ordered by the guest into the, uh, into the system. Uh, we have seen a handoff, so we went from one camera to another, and now this line cook is adding some ingredients and is going to put the ball in the expo and bump the order. As he bumps the order, the KDS, instead of having the order disappear, resurfaces the order, tells him, hey, you forgot the pickled onions, an opportunity for the line cook to add the pickled onions, make the order perfect, and then uh, bump it again, and this time the, the guest will receive an order exactly as it was ordered instead of with, you know, missing ingredients. This is actually a, a live QR code um, of our demo environment. So if you actually want to grab your cell phone, I got mine right here. I can actually go ahead and just scan that QR code. Not actually going to show what that guest experience looks like. Um, again, the, the part of the magic of our platform is it's a simple QR code. You could have over 5,000 people scan the exact same QR code every single day, get their own unique ticket, um, be able to make a payment, and post directly back to the POS. There's no core change in your payment architecture or your ordering setup. It just fully integrates with your AI platform. So again, beyond just the ordering piece of it, maximize from a marketing perspective and an operations perspective and a speed perspective there too. So the uh, widening of the appearances the different characters and personas that are going to be used and are being used and and across the different channels where you know you have a mobile phone and you and you've got a low bandwidth avatar you know that you recognize and you like the look of uh that's speaking to you in your language you know you get a you get a faster um you get a faster transaction uh the accessibility is higher and you get a wider audience. We just talked about a bunch of technologies that are being brought into the restaurant space, right? Rather, we're talking about, you just talked about avatars or, or the networks driving that or IoT or, or cameras for computer vision. All of these things do increase your risk posture because it's more things you're bringing on into your environment that may or not be matching um, a proper security posture. They might, but a lot of times we've seen that they might not. And you know, I, it's a good quote from, from Greg here that we talk about, you know, think about things like, um, you know, generative AI and how it's being used to create better, more tailored, quicker loyalty campaigns to be able to ingest more data and pump stuff out to get to your consumers quicker, you know, in support of that unified commerce experience. But think about how it could be used on the other side. It used to take days, maybe, maybe longer, right, to craft a really good attack campaign against an organization or a person. Now it takes maybe a day sometimes minutes because all you have to do is pump a little bit of data in and then the engine just pulls the rest of it in and tailors a campaign. So we could be very, very successful an attacker in creating a phishing campaign targeted at you, targeting at a business, and it doesn't take a lot to do that. So it was previously skilled people with all the tools, everything at their disposal. And now any one of us on this call could go, go download a package and have a nice user interface right that we're all used to pump in some data and now it's creating an attack campaign that's really how easy it is these days and, and ai is is being used as a tool um, to help attackers in that space regulation will still take its time to catch up there aren't uh, clearly expressed guidelines on on this we all we all grapple with you know just to give you an example and this kind of got me thinking is one of our one of the brands um, that we were talking to um, and as we, we use voice to really understand who the customer is and, and you know, we can divide, you know, based on, on the voice, we know the gender, age groups and so on. And the question came up, can you, um, you know, can you identify the uh, ethnic group the customer belongs to so that we can upsell the items that that ethnic group is most likely to consume? And, you know, and there have been questions like this that, that have come up in the past. And, you know, there's a lot that AI can do, but, you know, what is, what is really the, where do we tread the right line? Ethical ignorance will be a competitive disadvantage. Ethical knowledge won't win you a deal. Ethical ignorance will lose you a deal. That AI, although this group knows quite well what it can do, both good and bad, 
those on the outside, on the business side of your customers, and especially on the legal and compliance side, are going to say, oh, time out, hold on. This is unknown. This is a bit crazy. This is also an era where we've got the European Union bringing much as they brought GDPR to us, now bringing the Artificial Intelligence Act to us. So a lot of questions and the perceived ethics and legal risks are multiplying. The perceived ethics and legal risks are multiplying in this era of generative AI.